House of Dragon Season 2, Episode 1. Break down. We're gonna break it down. Mm, 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 mm. The way that George R. R. Martin described the Fire and Blood book is that it's more of unreliable narration and very green leaning account, which is why it portrays Rhaenyra in very poor light during times in the books. Apparently the Maesters, not real big fans of Rhaenyra. But ultimately the events of Blood and Cheese go down the same way the ultimate death of Helena and Aegon's son, Jaehaerys. And since mm -hmm. the show is meant to be the truer version of events, the full context we get for Blood and Cheese is that originally it was all about getting Aemon's head for Lucerys, getting revenge against Aemon by killing Stop. him. But when they actually came to do the deed, sneaking through the Red Keep, they couldn't find Aemon. So instead, Blood and Cheese, who already kind of messed up in the head, like already pretty mad, just decided, well, she's good enough. These babies are good enough. We'll go for them. He asked for a son. We'll give him a son. You're not really meant to truly align with any one side, but based on the way things go down episode to episode, particularly this episode, they really do want to sympathize both sides in different ways more. Like they want you to sympathize a little bit more with the greens after what happens in this episode. Nah. That will not always be the case though, because what happens in episode- That kid was going to be a terrible king anyway. Better off he's dead. One basically drives fine. everything that happens later this season. Like it's all about retaliation escalation on both sides. One of the first major changes everybody will recognize instantly for season two is that they changed the entire she didn't want to be king scene. anyway. Now, instead of the model of the Valyrian freehold with the blood flowing- Though the mom was literally like, what if he doesn't want to be king? She knew that he didn't want to be king, that he wouldn't be suited to be a king. He was just like a quiet, autistic little f And so it's actually probably, that's why she let him die because she's like, well, you know what? Death is kinder than living a life that you hate because the daughter can't be king. That's why she just pointed to it. During the original show, they changed the intro episode to episode, mostly based on where you went because it was a literal map representation. Personally, I think that the original show intro is still peak. It has not been topped yet, but the intro for House of the Dragon season one was still pretty cool. You guys can let me know which intro you prefer. For the most part, the tapestry itself follows the same logic as the original Valyrian Freehold 3D model with the blood. Like you start with ancient Valyria, the doom, like you see all the dragons here, the death of the dragons, I like them all. the 14 flames blowing up, the doom of Valyria essentially. Just a intro. Danis the Dreamer getting the dream, Anus Targaryen taking most people his don't dragons, put that much into the an intro. Get on HBO. When episode one picks up in present day, it's only been about 10 days since the end of season one, so not much time has gone by. Like everybody's still grieving for a bunch of different characters. Add a couple new ones to that list by the end of the episode. <laughs> but in that 10 days, Jaehaerys <laughs> sealed the alliance and obviously traveled north to the wall. So we also get the Easter eggs and references to the Night's Watch, the White Walkers, the Night King. The show doesn't really have a lot he of- He looked, I felt like there was a time skip because he looked so much older. You're telling me it's 10 days after? <laughs> Notice he's also carrying ice on his back, the Valyrian greatsword of House Stark. It has been ice melted down back. by Tywin yet later in the he timeline. RIP Ned Stark. We also get a chance for a callback to the whole idea that when Winter is coming in the long night on the main show. We will see plenty of House Stark in future seasons. They're a much bigger part of the story later during the Dance of Dragons. Their scene up on the wall looking out over the north is also meant to Where be a direct never parallel not to John's season in the north. one. There's a lot of book plot of things that and surprise, surprise, goody goody two shoes, Allison is totally getting it on with Kristen Cole. It's basically meant to herald the beginning of the downfall from her being this very prim and proper persona, like the mask that Allison had been wearing her whole life, where she spent all this time being a bastion of tradition, following rule. Next uh, season, no, next episode tonight, you're gonna see her have some $27 cookies. She's gonna disregard her prim and proper image, become the villain of the show doing anything people told her to do, including the small council of the Cerys and her father. But you can kind of see her whole relationship with Sir Lord Weird Footstuff is kind of been grating on her whole set. Like all these sacrifices that she's made, these personal sacrifices. And ultimately she finds that it leads to nothing for her. Like being a good girl her whole life got her nothing, nowhere. After Aegon is crowned, That's very true, clearly, don't. Stops listening to her has no intention of doing what she says or listening to her suggestions at all. Everyone on the Green Council kind of derides, ignores her. Nobody seems like they even care what she has to say or what she thinks. Aemon even makes fun of her during the trailers like she's a fool. So the idea with Allison this season is that she no longer feels like she has any purpose in her life. Nothing matters. So she starts to give in to her baser instincts, which leads to her getting it on with Kristen Cole. 
And even during season one up to this point, it seemed like Kristen Cole had been simping for her ever since Rhaenyra turned down his offer of running away to Essos together. Like he's been punishing her ever since in a low level, like holding this grudge against her. You kind of saw this weird relationship so forming between the two of them, but I don't think that she ever actually did anything with him until very, very recently. Like episode one here is probably the beginning of them getting it on. It also seems like later he's the person who gave her the idea Coop, to fire Otto Hightower as his hand of king. Toes. When Aegon enters the Iron Throne Room to he answer the questions, but you better say those toes for me. Inside the throne room, you can also see in the background they're building King Viserys' statue because around all the pillars you see statues depicting all the previous kings of the Targaryen family back to Aegon the Conqueror. We meet Hugh Hammer, who's one of the dragon seeds. Like He'll be important later this season. Name. He's a black Hugh Hammer. At King's Landing. They just want to set up the idea why he's dissatisfied <laughs> with the crown, why he might be willing to support Rhaenyra eventually. The showrunner said this season, just in general, they're focusing more on the plight of the small folk and the way that they react and handle everything that's happening within the Dance of the Dragons, like how it winds up affecting them and how pissed off they get at all the royals on both sides. Then we finally check in with Rhaenyra post Lucerus in the finale, and she looks like about 10 bucks, like she has not rested at all in the past 10 days, except to pass out on the beach, spending all that time looking for his body, just going mad with grief. Emma Darcy's performance in this was amazing, probably gonna wind up winning an Emmy for this, or at least getting nominated. Jace winds up returning, they have their very emotional reunion where they have a good cry together, and he tells her that he secured the North for her. We learn that Allison is furious with Aemond, horrified at his actions, even though Aegon still wants him around. The rest of the Green Council seems like they don't care that much either. Like one of the big changes or additions to the book too is how Aemond tells the story of what really happened during that finale. He basically plays it like he killed Lucerys on purpose, knowing that if people think that he did it on purpose, he'll eventually become the most hated and potentially feared man in Westeros because he's also riding the most powerful dragon. His whole quest is to become the greatest warrior, the most feared person, the most powerful That's Targaryen true. in the realm. Because it's like, if people are gonna hate you anyways because you fucked up, you might as well make them scared to fuck you back. That's smart. He also feels like he should have been king, not Aegon. Like he's the person that wants it, whereas Aegon is like full Jon Snow. I don't want. We're gonna it. hate you anyways. This is make one of the villain. reasons why Aemon is so obsessed with Daemon, because currently Daemon has the reputation of being the most fearsome fighter in Westeros because of his past deeds and the wars that we saw during season one. Also, Aemon, notice, is an anagram of Daemon. So the show's sort of setting them up as two sides of the same coin. Like they're very chaotic good, I would say. Like not chaotic neutral, because they do advocate for both those sides, and they both do think that they're doing the right thing for their sides. But they're the ones on both sides of this that are pushing each side further and further towards Civil War, the actual Dance of the Dragons, whereas a lot of people on both sides don't actually want any fighting to go down. We get another dragon dream from Helena Targaryen, who became famous for telling the future during season one, even though nobody listened to her or understood what was going on. Maybe What I could see is Aemon becoming Hand of the King and then killing his brother, the king. The, he's like a hybrid Kingslayer type character. Viserys though, like they didn't have any scenes together where they showed it on screen, but I think the idea is that Viserys thought of her as his favorite child and knew all about the dragon dreams. When Aegon clocks her acting strange, he mistakenly assumes she's worried about the pending dance of the dragons and what Rhaenyra's side is going to do, but she's actually afraid of quote unquote the rats, and that's her foreseeing the events of Blood and Cheese, because Cheese was a rat catcher working in the Red Keep, that's how he knew about all the secret passageways. Yeah, this guy kills it in Game of Thrones. That's his peak season. He just like waits and then goes full dragon mode.